This is the Sound Lab at Home, Australia's top rock program with all the best guests from coast to coast and around the world. Here's your host, music industry veteran, director of the Sound Lab Music School, and author of Why Learn Music, Melbourne's Princess of Rock, Leah Gallen. Infamous for his prank telephone skits, my next guest, Johnny Brennan, is the creator of the multi platinum comedy act, The Jerky Boys. Johnny joins me in all his hilarity from Queens, New York, to share with his Aussie fans on The Sound Lab at Home. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm here with Johnny Brennan, the creator of The Jerky Boys, all the way from, it looks like your car there. I actually got caught on the road and wouldn't be able to get back in time, so I figured I'd just pull over in a parking lot. So welcome. Thank you very much for joining us today on The Sound Lab at Home. And it's great for me to be able to finally talk to Australia and be a little bit more personal uh, rather than just a telephone or an interview. Yeah, absolutely. And so you've obviously got a ton of fans down here in Australia, so we're very rapt to be able to speak to you. Obviously a following for many, many decades. You know, it's funny. My Australian fan base goes back to the very, very beginning. It was uh, pretty amazing, actually. Uh, I started getting fan mail back in the day from Australia, and I'm going back... This may even be, you know, in the 80s, late 80s. My bootlegs were pretty much all over the world. Wherever they spoke English, the United Kingdom, you know, Canada, Australia, the Jerky Boys bootlegs were everywhere. And then when it started to come out officially on Atlantic Records, it was just amazing. With all those bootlegs out, the New York Times said it was the largest bootleg in history and still went on to sell multi-platinum, millions and millions of records sold. You know, it's funny, after all these decades, it's always a blast when I talk to fans now. You know, with the uh, social media and stuff, I'm always talking to Australian fans and and they're always like some of the coolest fans. They're just so, so awesome and, and laid back and, and, you know, they're not like ass tight, you know? Like some sometimes here in the States, you know, if uh, an order doesn't go out right away, let's say it's a, a, a DVD, people are right away, you know, where's my DVD? I didn't get my DVD yet. And sometimes, you know, I'll check an Australian order and it's like, no worries, mate. You know, they, they everything is cool. Everything is good, you know, and the people are just so, so laid back and, and awesome. And, and I've always said, I, I really would love to get down to Australia. So anyway, I come out with a brand new record it dropped on Black Friday, November 27th. And it's it's my first actual traditional style Jerky Boys record where I had to sit down and create all brand new material because I didn't have any. Uh, and you're talking 25 plus years. So then the record comes out and goes straight to number one. And the funny thing is uh, my manager calls me the next day and says, check out the charts. You're not going to believe it. And Number 60 on the charts was Jerky Boys, the namesake from 30 plus years ago when that went on the charts and was number one. And the next day we look and it's number 12. And then the following day we look and it's number two. So here we are with my brand new record that I just put out, number one. And number two was the Jerky Boys record from all those decades ago. And man, you talk about a good feeling. That was pretty amazing. So that's on iTunes, Amazon, you know, all over social media. It's pretty amazing that after 25 years of no records at all from my Jerky Boys camp, coming out with a brand new one and it goes straight to number one. That's fantastic and and well-deserved. And I think a hiatus that many people were very keen to, to see you bring out some new work and hear the return of some old characters as well. Let's face it. I had to buckle down and I have to say, it's not easy. It's not like it was 35, 40 years ago where I used to sit down and uh, I'll never forget for Jerky Boys 2, I needed like, I had a few tracks from the bootleg, but I I needed like another 15 or something like that. I forget what it was. And um, just sit down and bang, 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 you know, bang them out. And whatever I did went right on the record and I had Jerky Boys 2. That record hit number one in Billboard magazine. And the funny thing is, I got a call at my house back in like 1991 or 92, I forget when it was, and it was these guys, this band, and they asked if they could use my namesake. There was a skit that I did on Jerky Boys 2. It was the number one track, and it was called Pablo Honey. 
So these guys on the phone with the record label, they're asking, hey, Johnny, could we use Pablo Honey to name our debut album in America? And I said, absolutely, guys. I said, go ahead, you know, and enjoy it. You know, take it and go name your album Pablo Honey and blah, blah, blah. And sure enough, chases us up the charts, the Billboard charts, Jerky Boys number one and number two was Radiohead with Pablo Honey. And I always love telling that story because that's such an amazing story. You couldn't make this stuff up. It's like you talk about a fairy tale, but that's just one of the instances where these really cool things happen. It's also the crossover between music and comedy and actually getting a Jerky Boys CD with the first CD collection I ever had. So I was actually in America and a uh, dear friend, Norman's rare guitar's daughter, Sarah Harris, took me to Tower Records and said, these are all the albums and this is what you need. This is your education in music. And Jerky Boys was one of the CDs as well. So, you know, you're definitely That's in great. there. With the culture that was at the time in the 90s, what bands would you say from the 90s were around? Like Pearl Jam uh, and well, Nirvana? I can tell you firsthand, when they were just kids, uh, Nirvana, they were hardcore Jerky Boys fans. The actual producer that worked with them all the way back in the very early 90s with Nirvana, he surprised Dave Grohl with a recording that he had found. And it was my character, Frank Rizzo. They were recording over my character, Frank Rizzo, with Nirvana. And I believe this was like 90, 91 or something like that. Maybe it could have been even earlier. And Dave Grohl is listening and he's going, oh my God, the Jerky Boys. How do we do that? Uh, you don't have anybody down here worth like me. Right. Okay. Okay? Right. So I'll see you tomorrow with my tools, <laughs> face. <laughs> that was right, because we were on tour when that Jerky Boys thing came out. Someone gave us a cassette of it. So it's been the beginning of those bands like Pearl Jam, Nirvana, Radiohead. You see, what people don't realize is when I had to compete in Billboard magazine, I didn't have the luxury back then of just competing in comedy. You see what I'm saying? And I had to compete against the, the biggest name bands on the planet. And to, you know, to be number one in Billboard magazine against some of the biggest bands on the planet was no easy feat. So it's pretty wild, a hell of a trip. That was a tremendous era too. You're hundred percent right because the Jerky Boys had some sort of way of being on the scene and in the mix. So in other words, if you were, let's say, a, a race car guy and you love NASCAR, you know, the Jerky Boys permeated all of the NASCAR garages. It was in everybody's shop. Everybody had it. If it was the WWE or WWF, World Wrestling Federation, all the wrestlers were huge fans of the Jerky Boys. No matter what it was, if it was baseball, Major League Baseball, if it was hockey, somehow... The Jerky Boys and the Jerky Boys characters worked its way into, into every facet of entertainment. It was extraordinary, to say the least. Hi, I'm Leah Gallon, the Managing Director of the Sound Lab Music School here in Paran. This is our wonderful venue. We've been here for over 10 years. Now we've got the two options. We've got our fantastic teachers live back at the venue, or we've been running our lessons online via Zoom. So whether you're after online or live lessons, contact us today. Lots of people have got into it. I'm sure actually most of us have all had, had a try at a prank call. I remember we were doing prank calls at a girlfriend's house and the person that we prank called actually, is it Star 69? It's, uh, I believe you're right. I believe it's Star 69. I think they might've even had it in the eighties, but it was definitely in the early nineties. I remember when they brought out, uh, Caller ID. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't bother me in the least. I would do a character, and uh, it only happened maybe two or three times that I remember. And I'd be doing a, one of my characters, and uh, and as soon as bit was over, you know, the phone rings right back. You know, I have caller ID. You just called me, and 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 blah 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 blah. They would give you know try to give me the business, and I would completely answer them in a, in a different character. Let's say I might have done Frank Rizzo. And I would answer them with the Jack Torse, uh, the gay character, telling them profusely that I don't know what you're speaking about. I've been here by myself. I haven't been on the phone. And they would just be like, oh man, there must be some sort of mistake. I actually got the brunt of the blame because the, the caller called back and the parents 
answered the phone. This was late at night, and obviously they came up, and the girls all got in trouble for doing the prank call, and they blamed it on me because I was the Australian girl and I was going home. But everybody got grounded. It was illegal. Is it? Is it still an illegal thing? I don't think it's illegal. It is illegal. I'm sure it's illegal if you're threatening. And if you listen to all any of the, you know, you can go listen to any of the bootlegs or the original Jerky Boys work. It was my mission to just make people feel good with the characters and make people have a really a good laugh at the expense of my characters. Uh, the humor was all, all always self-deprecating humor. The joke was in on me or my characters or, or I might be putting this guy on the phone in, into a bit of a tizzy uh, with this insane character that I use. But I always made it a point to never do anything that would hurt somebody or be um, mean-spirited to somebody. That, to me, is not humorous. To me, that's just asinine, and it's not something I ever did. I never really worried about that stuff, but I'm sure there are certain things that I don't know the legality, but I'm sure there's certain things that you can't do. I made it a point to never call, let's say, like a 911, an emergency line. I didn't. I never did any of that stuff. For example, when, when I did the original Saul Rosenberg blew his hand off with Firecracker, that was a long, long, long time ago. Lots of people love that. The lady's asking him, what, you know, what was the size of this? And I told her, I said, you know, you know when you finish with the toilet paper, the tube that's left over after the toilet paper? I said, that's what it looked like. And the lady's like, oh my God, that's not a firecracker. That's like an M80. And so he's talking about his, he blew his hand off and he feels all numb and stingy, so, but he feels, he feels okay. It's, and, and, but he, he's numb and stingy. But again, when I did that call, it's not that was not an emergency 911 line. That was a um, like a hospice care center where you, we have them all over now, where you could just walk in off the street if, you get, if you're not feeling good or if you need a couple of stitches. And um, that's what it was. It was that sort of thing. So I think if you, you know, that's you know who knows, you know, that's why maybe maybe the Jerky Boys was just meant to be because everything was just like a. A puzzle everything just fit into place like jackass and other shows like that that were quite notorious for doing crazy things uh, borat as you said it was just for a laugh the reason that the jerky boys to this day and still on into the future still going as i just proved when i just came out with my new record just a couple of months ago is because of my characters people people have fallen in love with with my characters and I've been saying it since the beginning and Howard Stern said it, anybody who gets it, my characters are based on real people. So when I do Sal Rosenberg, I'm literally doing the voice and the mannerisms and the person, the most important thing, the personality of my mom. So whenever you hear Sal Rosenberg, I'm literally doing my mom's persona. And the same holds true for Frank Rizzo. When I do Frank Rizzo, I'm doing my dad. When my dad used to get pissed off, that's exactly, he's Frank Rizzo. And so on and so on and so on. So Kissel is my uncle Vinny, who passed away in 1998, and I dedicated Jerky Boys 5 to his memory. That was Kissel. And all the characters are based on family or friends or, or for example, big old badass Bob the Cattle Rustler is based on from a farmer not far here up where I grew up in the country. So in other words, you're, they're not just cartoon figures. These are people that actually lived and breathed and walked. They, they're so, and that's the reason why I believe that the Jerky Boys has been such a, an amazing driving force. And it's funny, you know, you mentioned uh, Jackass, Johnny Knoxville, a huge Jerky Boys fan. Ollie G is another huge Jerky Boys fan. All these people gravitated to my work back then because nobody at that time had ever heard anything like it. You know, it had tremendous shock value. I think that that's what was the driving force, the amazing shock value. People would make tapes because they'd get the bootleg and they would hand it to their friends and say, you're not going to effing believe this. you got to hear this. And it was the shock value. I'm, I'm, that's what that's what was driving force. I don't do anything that's set up or contrived. It has to be 100% real. They don't know that you're calling them at all. Is that right? Probably need to say that. Yeah, it has to be a real person that doesn't have any clue that I'm calling. 
Now you mentioned also, I wanted to say, so you were effectively discovered by Howard Stern. You want to tell us about that experience? Howard was a, a major factor in, you could say like the bootleg was everywhere. The bootleg was all over the place. It was all over the streets and you name it, East Coast, West Coast, up, down, North, South. So the bootleg was everywhere and Howard got his hands on it as well. But the difference is Howard Stern started to play my stuff on his show. And that is when now you're talking about millions of listeners sitting in their car in the morning going to work. Now you got their ears. So you're talking about millions and millions of more people that are being made privy to this jerky boys. The rest is history. Howard Stern is the man. He's New York. Again, you're going way, way back. But it was DJs around the whole country. You had Mark Parento up in Boston. It was a big time college town up there. And Parento was pushing the jerky boys. Most of your DJs from coast to coast were playing the hell out of the jerky boys. Do you want to tell us about your character, Bort Goldman from Family Guy? I've been on Family Guy now. This is 19. This is my 19th season. Uh, so that's a long time. It's funny. They wanted Saul Rosenberg from the Jerky Boys. They wanted Saul Rosenberg in Family Guy. And I, I said, I can't do that. Saul Rosenberg is a Jerky Boys character. Jerky Boys have been around a long, long time. And Saul belongs to the Jerky Boys. I said, but not an issue, not a big problem. And I thought right away, you know, when I'm doing... Saul Rosenberg, I switch over to do Mort Goldman, and it's like the two sides of my mom. Saul Rosenberg is just much more laid back, um, much more low key. Like, for example, Saul would be like, Should I bring all my shoes and my glasses so I have them with me? That's one side of my mom, like the way she used to speak. And then when my mom would get pissed off or she'd yell at us or get feisty, that's where I figured that would be a great personality for Mort Goldman. And if you listen or you watch Mort Goldman in Family Guy, Mort Goldman is always fired up. He, he sounds a little like Saul, but not a lot, because Mort Goldman's like, you know, his tone is more like, Peter, are you going to help me burn down the pharmacy or what? We've got to get this thing done. So he's he'll, he'll fight at the drop of a hat. He's always amped up and ready to go. I always say he's uh, Saul Rosenberg's long-lost cousin. But... Uh, you can definitely tell the difference the difference in the two characters. Like I said, it's both sides of my mom's personality. One to make Mort and one to make Saul. How did you get involved in, in that? How did that get picked up? They just came to you or? I'll tell you a funny story. I actually, before there was a show Family Guy, before there was a show, they sent me a script and Seth actually had me reading for Peter, the main character. This is way back, it's many years ago. It's before, the, the, before they actually had the show. So I read for Peter and um, I take it that the uh, the producers were not really thrilled about having, you know, Frank Rizzo jerky boys because at the time they're thinking, oh my God, this is all R-rated F-bombs and all this other stuff and we can't have this guy, uh, you know, on Fox TV and blah, blah, blah. That's what I'm guessing. But anyway, Seth was persistent because Seth, he was a fan of mine since he was 11 years old. He grew up listening to my stuff and Seth wanted me in the worst way to be part of that show. So I think it was a year later and Seth came to me and that, that's what the whole Saul Rosenberg thing. And that's when I created Mort Goldman for the show. And Mort Goldman is and ha always has been one of the most beloved characters on the show. I've actually done a lot of different characters on Family Guy. People's favorites, a lot of people say their favorite two episodes are episodes where I was featured in. Uh, there's one called Family Gay, where I play Peter's lover. My name is Scott. And there's another one called Road to Germany, where my character, Mort Goldman, goes in a time machine and goes back to Nazi Germany. And they're both tremendous episodes. You want to hear something funny? Yeah. If you, want, if, you, if you get this to your viewers, tell them, uh, go on Google, and you look up Mort Goldman, Road to Germany, deleted scenes deleted scenes and it is hilarious you wait till you see it's it's me and stewie and brian walking through the countryside and we're in major verbal fights and cursing and yelling at each other but so look up deleted scenes more goldman road to germany the sound lab ebook why learn music a comprehensive guide to the benefits of learning music is out now we've put decades of music learning concepts in this ebook especially for you this is a must read for anyone looking to grow to their full music learning potential visit our website to get your free ebook today yes yeah, so multi-platinum records you've had four of them with over eight million sold is that correct? Uh, the fourth album, is that right? Or the fifth after a 20 year hiatus? I didn't put any records out 
for it's 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 got to be tw 20 25 years and i'm talking about official jerky style record where i have to sit down and do it just like the old days where it's i don't have any material i got to start from scratch and i got to make a jerky boys record so all the records stopped many moons ago celebrated its 25th year so also that the jerky boys movie um, has an, an amazing soundtrack as well. A lot of people have said it's one of the best soundtracks ever. Green Day was on there. Um, Collective Soul, they did this title track for the movie. L7, you had uh, Coolio and the 40 Thieves. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. Tom, uh, Lenny Kravitz did a song for Tom Jones, Are You Gonna Go My Way? Ozzy Osbourne, the band Helmet was on there doing Ozzy Osbourne's Symptom of the Universe. So that's just to name a few. Yeah, the soundtrack is absolutely amazing. And the movie, it's almost like the Rocky Horror Picture Show. The movie has a, a massive following to this day. The Jerky Boys motion picture. Yeah, so it was sort of critically canned, I think, when it was released, is that right? But it's having a resurgence, obviously, over the years. That's par for the course. Critics, critics hate, they despise comedy. They want nothing to do with it. It's funny, if you look at it now, you go on some of these sites that, that where you can rent it and stuff like that, it's got four and a half, five star rating. So that that's what time will do. But let's face it, we're trying to make Gone with the Wind, a funny film about my character calling up and, and getting tangled up with the mafia. And and everyone who sees the Jerky Boys movie, 99.9% .9 of the people, they take it for what it is and they say, oh my God, I love that freaking movie. You look at the movie stars that were in my movie, Academy Award winning actors. These are people that won Oscars in their lives and they wanted to be part of the Jerky Boys picture. Who was in the film? Do you want to reel off a few? Alan Arkin, uh, the great William Hickey. You had Brad Sullivan from Slapshot. These are all people that are big time celebrated award winning actors. Uh, Suzanne Shepard from Goodfellows. She played my mom. You had Big Pussy from The Sopranos, Vinnie Pastore. Who else? I don't want to forget anybody. Oh, Alan North. Alan North was in it. Tarantina. Jesus, it, it was just packed with uh, major talent. They all wanted to be in that film. Tom Jones was in the movie. It was just amazing. Is there going to be a sequel to the Jerky Boys film? You know, anything's possible. There's probably a million things they can think of in Hollywood. But um, we'll see what happens. Like I said, I just came out with a brand new record, so I'm taking it one step at a time. What music are you into and do you play an instrument at all? Yes, actually, I play uh, I play drums and I play guitar, but I'm basically a big time lover of, uh, you know, bands like The Who, Led Zeppelin, in that era, just the, the rock and roll. Um, you know, then later through the 80s, you know, you had Van Halen. And although that wasn't really, you know, I, I got into it, I played it, I performed. Uh, if you said you played Led Zeppelin or you could do some, you know, Jimmy Page or, you know, back in those days, you had to be good. And these kids today, they got it so awesome. Back when I was trying to learn, you had to literally take the needle off the record. Let's say it was, I'm picking up a solo from uh, Page, let's say. You, you're starting to pick up a guitar solo, you, you hear a couple of notes, you got to lift the needle up quick. And then you got to take those notes from your head, your ears, and transpose them onto the guitar. And that's the way we did it back then. A lot more resources for, for people learning instruments, for sure. And then, you know, obviously with the Sound Lab Music School, we do live lessons, but now we're doing online lessons because of COVID. That's the way forward. I wanted to talk to you. I saw some comments that you made about your nerves and confidence. And I suppose I want to ask you, do you like the sound of your own voice? It's a very interesting topic. You know, years ago, when I was a little kid in the 60s and I was recording on a tape recorder, I didn't mind listening to myself back, but I really didn't kind of like it. I'm sure a lot of people do that. A lot of people get that. I really didn't like it when I was in the room with people and they were listening to my voice with me. That kind of, I didn't like that. I was, I was just very uncomfortable. So that stayed with me a long time. So it made me uncomfortable, but I'll tell you what, that's all changed. And I actually learned to just sit back Take a deep breath and appreciate it. Because here were all these people, you know, a, a few hundred people listening to my skit over the intercom and saying every single word of my skit, every word I would say and every word the victim would say. And that's when I realized to myself, this is an amazing creation. These people love what I've created. And, and I just like a weight was lifted off. I never felt that again. And I promise myself I never will. And there's no reason to feel funny. There's no reason to be embarrassed. If you're making people feel really good and it makes them laugh and, and really feel awesome, that's all that matters.
this particular record, I've never seen so many people so happy and loving so many of the different skits on this new record, which, like I said to you in the beginning, I, in the beginning of our conversation, you never know what to expect. Like when I put this record together, I, I, I sequence and I'm, I'm going, oh, this would go here. This would go good here. And and I'm thinking some of these I think are killer on this record. I have got people from this call to this call to this call all over. And, and everyone's favorite is different. So that's when you know you, you really you knocked it out of the park and it's a great record. So also, I just wanted to let the fans out there know that you do have merchandise available for sale on your website, which is fantastic. Private messages you can purchase, if you want to tell us about that. It's uh, thejerkyboys.com. I have to say, one of the new things I'm doing, and people are going nuts for these, it's called Cameo. So if, if you go to cameo.com, uh, and then it's forward slash Johnny Brennan. So cameo.com forward slash Johnny Brennan. I, I do a lot of these cameos and people go nuts for them. They can order birthday presents for their dads or their brothers or whatever. But I've done a, a lot of these cameos. So And I know it's a big thing. People love these cameos. Oh, yeah, having a personalized message like that from you. All right, well, listen, I reckon I, I, I'll wrap it up and thank you very much for joining us today. Johnny, it's been fantastic talking to you. What an opportunity for your Australian fans to get to know a bit more about the Jerky Boys and hear what you've been up to. We wish you all the best and success. We definitely have to get together. If you get to the States or I get to Australia, we'll get together. Is it possible for me to, to say another big thank you to the Australian fans? Absolutely, of course. All right, I just want to... Before I leave, I just want to say once again, uh, the biggest, greatest thank you to um, to my Australian fans. And you guys have been there from the beginning and, and I greatly appreciate that. And always look forward to hearing from you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thanks for being on the Sound Lab at home. Thank you very much. Hello? Hello? Oh boy. Yes, hi, hello, this is Saul. Sal Rosenberg, hi. Oh boy. You know, I, I I'm calling I'm calling for Leah, please. The Sound Lab Music School in Melbourne, Australia, you know. Uh, established I think in two thousand nine. You know, this is amazing. It, it's training the next generation of rock stars for over ten years. You know, I was a rock star. You know, years ago I used to play with A C D C. I was one of their lead guys. I taught them all the moves, you know, with the with the little book bag and and things like that. You know, that was a big a big you know Sal Rosenberg thing. The conductor said that I could get my book bag, and and you know, and we hit it off right away. Me and ACDC. Anyway, world class teachers at at the Sound Lab that'll help you fast track your musical journey. Oh boy. How sweet, that's so nice. Live and online lessons available. Visit the Sound Lab, thesoundlab.com.au. The, the Please, you're gonna really have a wonderful time. Oh God, uh, this is beautiful. The Sound Lab sincerely appreciates your support in watching our content. Please be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more of the Sound Lab at home.